Hey guys, this is BJ from Very Basic Bible. There we go, a little more light. Let there be light. Huh. The oldest Christian joke in the. So we're gonna go. We're going through Jeremiah. So going through some early chapters. Let's open some more tabs. We get our parallel Bible. Put you all the way over there. Bible Gateway, Bible Hub. Doot. Wait, did that have a little? What's that little pin? Wait, if I move this one, does it have a pin? It does. If I move, oh, okay. The only one I ever pinned was Game FAQs because one times I wanted to go there and it wasn't there, and I was like, hey, sometimes I want to go there, so I pinned it. The other ones I go there so often that they stay. I don't need them pinned. I don't know. Anyway. I'm gonna start uh, looking. I'm gonna start looking at uh instead of just the plain black and white with the little gray things. The blue up here in the search bar, the same exact thing I always look at. Instead of looking at all that all the time, we'll also look at Bible Gateway, where you got the uh, the color over here and the extra stuff. We'll look at Blue Letter Bible. Blue Letter Bible. That is a good one for studying specifically rather than just trying to figure out wait, what what is, you know, the basic layout. <laughs> Bible Hub, we got our parallel. We hit that parallel. Let's see, Genesis 1-1 in the NIV, the NLT, the ESV, the BSB, the KJB, the K in New KGB, that King James Bible is actually King James Version. King James Version, New King James Version. See, they're different. Version. Bible. But they're the same. Uh, you, you know, New King James is like updated. New American Standard Bible. New American Standard 95 and 90 and 77. Look at that. So I got older ones. You can you can try to look at in the beginning, the author exactly the same. Of Genesis 1 1. We went to other verses, they'd be a little different because they're all NASB, but they're updated. Anyway, so what if instead of so I looked right here, parallel, but PCH means parallel chapters. Genesis 1 1. Most of year. Regular Bible translations. The New International Version, the English Standard Version, New American Standard Bible. I'm sure it's the 2020. There's the King James. I wish I knew. If I click on that, what happens? I go to the King James. Oh, wait, parallel. P A R, I'm sure it means parallel. So I... <gasps> English Standard Version. Oh, that's right. We looked at that last time. Okay, good, good. So getting to know it a little bit. But we're going to be in Jeremiah 5, nope, 4. I recognize it by the first verse. All right. And here, Jeremiah 4. Let's do this thing. All right. X this yellow out up here. Right here. Add parallel. Got two of them. The maroon or whatever color this is over here. Orange, brownish. It's skinnier. The words are pretty small. I agree on Bible Gateway. Add another parallel. How many can we add? I think up to five. Yep, there's five. Oh, wait, wait. That's not share, share. So the parallel button is gone. And look. Can barely see any of that. If next line, you next line, Israel next line, will next line return, comma next line, then next line return. If thou next line wilt return, oh next line, Israel saith, just like that's man. So what if I hit control minus minus? That's very hard to see and is very long. And the reason why that's actually very long 
Jeremiah 4 parallel chapters. A lot of this is in poetry. Okay. If you, now this seems very straightforward, but some versions still put it kind of in indentation. So not necessarily poetry. It, they, there's the big fat narrative sections where you have words all the way across the screen. Then if it's God talking, if it's somebody giving a speech, if it's poetry, they indent it. Let, let me show you what you're like, BJ, what the heck are you talking about? Bible Gateway. <laughs> Let's go see. All right. Christian Standard Bible. I'll go to Jeremiah 4. All right. See how this sentence is very long compared to these sentences and these sentences. And look where this sentence starts. It starts right at the three. But here we got this big fat space here. Got this big fat space here. Same down here. Pretty long sentence. And it starts at the five. Then it's indented. Right here is the indent, this blank space. That's because it's uh, declare in Judah, proclaim in Jerusalem, and say, so you're going to proclaim and declare something. Blow the ram's horn throughout the land, cry out loudly and say, assemble yourselves and let's flee. That's I'd like a speech he's giving. On that day, this is the Lord's declaration. The kings and the officials will lose their courage. A priest will see how long these are. That's God and Jeremiah kind of talking to each other. It seems like on that day, the kings and officials will lose courage could still be a part of the declaration. It seems. But the CSB, here it is. You can tell what it is by looking at the end there, Bible Gateway. You might need to scroll all the way up. Uh, CSB, okay. The CSB, the people who translated it, seem to think that verses 9, 10, and 11, this is good that we're using Jeremiah 4 because... Jeremiah 4, verse 5, verse 34 and 5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where we're going next, anyway. The CSB translators <laughs> seem to think verse 9, 10, 11, and 12 are no longer declaring Judah, proclaim, they're no longer the declaration or the proclamation. Here's the declaration, here's the proclamation. And then it ends at verse 9. Verse 9, probably Jeremiah, God talking to Jeremiah again. Why do the translators of the Christian Standard Bible think that? Why do they think this here? It suddenly stops from being the declaration to now God's just talking straight to Jeremiah. Because on that day, this is the Lord's declaration, but it's a declaration. And I know it's weird, isn't it? It's like it should still be up here. Well, just look. On that day is a very specific phrase. On that day means the day of destruction, the day I bring destruction on, the day that I move, the day that I do something powerful. That day that I, God, when something big and huge happens, whether it's destruction, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's, it's helpful, just something huge and marvelous and amazing and, and crazy, something's going to big, a big event that day and day isn't necessarily 24 hours on that major day jesus died right died at what he was on the cross for six hours but he was beaten okay so only six hours but jesus was beaten well before that so you could add more to the six hours he was taken the day before he was arrested taken and tried then eventually taken to pilot the next day wait a minute so it's more than a day now. When he died, he was laid in a tomb for three days or a day and two nights. You know, the three days, part of a day, a day, and part of a day. And then he rose. That's more than a day, but it's on that day. That's the day. You see, so so day isn't necessarily. I talked about other places in the Bible talk about that day being a locust invasion. Locust invasions happen over weeks and months, and then they cause 
famines, which is on that day, I will cause a famine. One single day that could happen. But generally a locust invasion, an army attacking, they don't attack in one day. They have to march all the way down there, which takes a lot longer than a day. You know, Jerusalem will be under siege for months on that day, right? <laughs> but then you could say, wait a minute, there's a day that they broke through and Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar broke through the walls in the siege of Jerusalem. Remember Jeremiah in chapter one. I'm saying this. Yes. Jeremiah 1. Remember, Jeremiah in chapter 1. Make this a little larger for you. The word of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, one of the priests living in Anathoth in the territory of Benjamin. Okay. The word of the Lord came to him. The word of the Lord, which were the word of Jeremiah. The words of Jeremiah were actually the word of the Lord. <laughs> came to him in the 13th year of the reign of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah. Josiah did good. We read in 2 Kings. Then got himself killed when he went out to battle. And also his son screwed every, no, no, Manasseh screwed everything up. Josiah, yeah, Josiah's son screwed everything up too. It also came through the days of Jehoiakim, son of, son of Josiah, king of Judah, who screwed everything up. Until the fifth month of the 11th year of Zedekiah, son of Josiah, who screwed everything up. And actually, one of them one of them got assassinated, I think. So uh, it's like it wasn't necessarily his fault, maybe. Maybe it was. Um, if we go back at uh, my first and second videos, the introduction. And it talks about Nebuchadnezzar attacking three times. Three. Three times. Three. And he attacks for so many days that eventually they run out of food. You don't run out of food in a day. But that is often called the day of the Lord. But then there could be, so it's more than one day. The day is more than one day. It's more than one 24-hour period. But then it talks about, but then you could say, well, what about the exact day, the exact 24-hour period, the day, the month, and the year? Like, like in, you know, January... Uh, uh, September 17th or or back on their calendar you know Nissan is one of the months they called it you know Adar I, was Adar uh, I should study this more <laughs> it was one of the months you know on that exact calendar day Nebuchadnezzar breaks down the wall the king's trying to escape Nebuchadnezzar captures the king I think it says it happens overnight yeah yeah Nebuchadnezzar is that the day Maybe the Nebuchadnezzar captured all these other kings. That was the last one. I mean, let's see. That is a 24-hour period. So you could, that is within a period, right? That is within a short time. No, they're talking about that calendar day. They could be. But when God says, on that day, I will cause a famine, it takes a long time to cause a famine. It takes a long time to run out of food. So that day is stretched out. Um, where were we? All right. Disaster from the north. Okay, so I think verse 3 and 4 are of themselves. And all these places agree, it seems. This is a, let's see. Ah, look at this. Verse 5 has this. It seems blue letter, it seems biblehub.com has put this in. Not the translators of the NESB, the ESB, the NET. This is Ezekiel 38. Okay. There's a there's a subtitle. All right. Chapter four. Look at chapter five. All these have subtitles. They all think that there's all the, the, the NABRE, the people who did the NET, the people who did the NIV, the people who did the ES, all these, they're like, hey, this is a new, a new uh, speech. The speech that Jeremiah was giving in chapter three, which is where God was saying, Jeremiah proclaimed to the north. 
to Israel. And then Israel says, hey, I'll come back to you. And God says, if you come back to me. And Israel says, I'll come back to you. But the whole time it's Jeremiah talking. Jeremiah is kind of describing a, a, a scene that could play out. Jeremiah is play acting out a scene, kind of. You could play up. So that Jeremiah stops talking there, right? Let's see. If you, Israel, want to come back. So he's still talking to Israel. Remember, Jer uh, he was talking to Judah about Israel. Now he's talking. He's talking to Jeremiah about Judah and Israel. Now he's talking to Israel through Jeremiah. If you, Israel, want to come back, says the Lord, if you want to come back to me, and must get, you must get those disgusting idols out of my sight and must no longer go astray. You must be truthful, honest, and upright when you take an oath, saying, as surely as the Lord lives, that's the oath they're taking, as surely as the Lord lives. If you do, if you do this, the nations will pray to be blessed by God as you are and will make God the object of their boasting. Look what you could do, Jerusalem. Get rid of all, you come back, get rid of all your stuff. No, come back to me. Get rid of all your stuff. All the other nations will then come to me. Okay, now verse three and four is a little. Yes, the Lord has this to say to the people of Judah and Jerusalem. So he could still be proclaiming to the north, as we saw in Jeremiah 3. Right? Jeremiah, the Lord said to me, have you seen? The Lord said to me in the days of King Josiah, have you seen what she did, that faithless one, Israel? Israel is the she. How Israel went up on every high hill and under every green tree and there played the whore. After I thought, and I thought after she has done all this, she will return to me. But she did not return to me. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. She saw, I believe it's Judah, that for all the adulterers of that faithless one, Israel, I had sent Israel away with a certificate of decree of divorce. Yet Israel's treacherous sister Judah did not fear. But Judah too went and played the whore. Because, let's see, because she took her whoredom lightly, she polluted the land, committed adultery, stone, and tree. Okay, I, this could be Judah or Israel. Because Judah took Israel's whoredom lightly, because Judah took her own whoredom lightly, Judah polluted the land, committing adultery. Yeah, for, oh, wait, wait. Because Israel took Israel's whoredom lightly. Israel polluted the land, committed adultery with stone and tree. Yet, for all this, Israel's treacherous sister Judah did not return to me with her whole heart. Look at this. Because Israel's immorality mattered so little to her, Israel. She, the Israel defiled the land, yet in spite of her unfaithful sister Judah. So Judah did not take a clue. God was like, I hope Judah takes a clue. The Lord has said to me, faithless Israel, the one who polluted the land, who did all this bad stuff, who went a whoring, has shown herself more righteous and treacherous to Judah. Why? Israel did all the bad stuff, got sent to exile. Judah saw Israel do the bad stuff. Judah saw Israel go into exile. Yet Judah did it anyway. The, the Judah has more reason to not follow her example, but she does. Judah has more reason to not do the bad thing, but Judah doesn't. So go and proclaim these words towards the north and say, return faithless Israel. So all through here, all the way down, Jeremiah is proclaiming to the north, whatever that means, whether he goes to different places on the northern border of of the southern nation of Judah. <clears throat> Maybe he even goes into Samaria, which used to which is what used to be the northern nation of Israel before they got exiled. For all the whoredom and stuff that we were talking about. They got um whoredom and uh, uh worshiping other gods. You know, you have if you're if you're if you're a whore, you have sex with people that's not your husband. If you're a religious whore, you worship gods that are not your god. So. so where did Jeremiah go? And he proclaimed to the north. Or did he just, did, was, he, was he in Jerusalem and he just 
turn to the north. Like he was facing west and they turned to the north. Wait, would that be north? Yeah, west, west. <laughs> if north is ahead of you, then west is to your left. I'm looking at a map in my head. We're not sure, you know, maybe he just went to cities that were in the north, establishments and just preached, you know, but people heard him. Why, why would God just say it if people didn't hear him? So Jeremiah here is talking for Israel and for God. And the Lord said, okay, where is it at? Uh, go and proclaim these words to the north and say, so here's God. Return, faithless Israel, declares the Lord. I will not look at you in anger, for I am merciful, declares the Lord. I will not be angry forever. Only acknowledge your guilt, that you have rebelled against the Lord your God and scattered your favors among foreigners under every green tree, and that you, Israel, have not obeyed my voice, the Lord, declares the Lord. <laughs> Return, faithless children, declares the Lord, for I am your master. I will take you, one from a city and two from a family, and I will bring you to Zion. I'll bring you back. I will give you shepherds after my own heart if you would turn to me, Israel. Jeremiah is proclaiming this. This is God talking to the north, talking to Israel, because Israel got exiled into the north. God's going to give him shepherds who will feed. I will give you shepherds who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And when you have multiplied and been fruitful in the land in those days, declares the Lord, they will no more say the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. It shall not come to mind or be remembered or missed. It shall not be made again. They're not going to make the Ark again. At that time, Jerusalem shall be called the throne of the Lord and all the nations shall gather to it, to the presence of the Lord in Jerusalem. They shall no more stubbornly follow their own evil heart. In those days, the house of Judah shall join the house of Israel. Remember, this is God proclaiming through Jeremiah to the north. He's telling the people of Israel this stuff. And together they shall come from the land of the north to the land that I gave your fathers. Judah and Israel shall both come from the land. I said how I would set you among my sons and give you a pleasant land, a heritage amongst most beautiful of all nations. And I thought you would call me my father and would not turn from following me. Surely as a treacherous wife leaves her husband. So you have been treacherous to me, O house of Israel, declares the Lord. Close the parentheses. A voice on the bare heights is heard. The weeping and pleading of Israel's sons. Israel went into exile. Israel's sons, right? Going to come back. Uh, I, so when Israel goes into exile, they're seen as good as dead. But, the, but they... But they have kids and children. Right up here. I thought you would call me my father. We're not right. How I set you among my sons. I said I would set. I would make you my sons. Well, now I got to send you into exile. But your sons. I sent you away, Israel. But hey, your sons, a voice heard on the height. The weeping of Israel's sons because they have perverted their way. They have forgotten their God. Return, faithless son. Open parentheses. So God hears their weeping. Because they have pleaded. Does he literally? Remember, this is like a drama that Jeremiah is acting out, right? This is a drama that Jeremiah is acting out. They have, they're pleading because they perverted their way. They've forgotten the Lord. Now that's true. But are they pleading because of that? Or is Jeremiah acting out? What if, what if okay, I'm going to proclaim to you. Wait, what if I heard them? What would God say next? Return, O faithless sons. I will heal your faithlessness. Close parentheses. What would Israel say? This is what Israel should do. Open parentheses. Behold, we come to you, for you are the Lord our God. Truly the hills are a delusion, the hills where they worship false idols. One second, okay. My phone's making funny. The orgies on the mountains. Yeah, that, that's where they, they had pagan rituals truly their delusion truly the lord is god the salvation of israel remember god said if you return to me i'll return to you you have been faithless to me be faithful to me and right here they're saying we will i'm sorry look where is it at uh they won't no more up here i saw merciful i will not be returning faith to close the law. i will not look at your anger only acknowledge your guilt that you rebelled against the Lord, your God, scatter your favors among for under every green tree. That's kind of like the hills. Under every green tree, they had idols. On high hills, they had idols where they had or mountain orgies. Remember, 
return faithless children. Okay. What does God say? To, if they would return, return faithless sons, I will heal your faithlessness. What does Israel say? Behold, we come to you, Israel's sons. And so the because that's the ones that are pleading. Uh, we will come to you. Truly, the hills are a delusion. The, the green trees are, are a delusion. The orgies on the mountains, you know. Truly, in the Lord our God is salvation. But from our youth, the shameful thing has devoured all for which our fathers labored. The shameful thing, the worshiping idols, it's devoured everything. It's devoured their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters. Let us lie down in our shame. Let us dishonor, cover us. For we have sinned against the Lord. They're repenting, we and our fathers, from our youth even to this day. In chapter 2, Jeremiah preaches and says, hey, Judah, you need to come back. Not in pretense. Jeremiah, God speaks through Jeremiah. Judah, you tried to come back, but it was all pretense. Judah, you said, wait, I haven't gone. I love you, God. That's false. In chapter 2, God says to Judah, come back to me. Not in fakery, but for reals right here god's saying if israel if you would be for real let us light up israel says let us lie down in our shame let us dishonor let our dishonor cover us for we have sinned against the lord our god we and our fathers this sounds real if if israel would do this god's saying you israel would truly come back and god's right and this whole drama here that jeremiah is acting out we have not obeyed the lord our god they repented Now, open parentheses. This is no longer Israel talking because it says, if you return, O Israel. So now it's God talking again to Israel. If you do return, O Israel, declares the Lord, then to me you should return. If you remove your detestable things from my presence, do not waver. And if you swear, as the Lord lives, in truth and justice and in righteousness, then the nations shall bless themselves in God. And in him they shall glory. The nations will come to me, Israel. Man, that's awesome. Like he said earlier, he said Judah and Jerusalem would both come and they, they wouldn't be like the Ark of the Lord. We need the Ark. No, they would just come to Jerusalem to where I'm at, you know. And if you think about it, they wouldn't even need Jerusalem. <laughs> to worship God anywhere, come to him with your whole heart. Four. Now, three and four is where we're not certain. For thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, he could still be proclaiming to the north. Break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Remove the foreskins of your heart, O men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my wrath go forth like fire and burn with none to quench it because of your evil deeds. Both of them need to break up their fallow ground, but then suddenly he turns to Judah. And it's like, hey, I'm going to break out if you don't. Because ultimately, when Jeremiah, I think it's maybe, when Jeremiah's proclaiming to the north, God's, you know, he's giving the message for Judah. The message actually isn't for Israel. The message is for Judah. Judah, if you would return to me, I would have compassion on you. Judah, return. I'll have compassion on you, Judah. Israel, Israel, return to me. I'll have compassion on you. Come to me, Israel, and good stuff will happen. If you come to me, Judah will come with you. you. You know, if you return to me, Israel, now Judah's listening to all this. People from Judah who have not gone in exile yet are listening. To, oh, so if Israel comes, God will have compassion on him? Will he have compassion on me? Judah's wondered. I'm assuming God is hoping that Judah wonders, is, is wondering that. Right, I assume that God is hoping that Judah will see what God would do for Israel. So Judah then would see that and would repent. For thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground. Come on, Judah and Jerusalem. Uh, Judah and Jerusalem, come on, Judah. Break up your fallow ground. Circumcise your hearts, lest my wrath go out against you like fire, like it did to Israel. Right. So it's kind of like a, a postscript. This is like, I think the drama's done. I think the 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 play kind of that Jeremiah's reading two parts. He's reading God and he's reading Israel. God says, Come to me, and Israel says, I will come to you. And God says, Come to me. And then God says, Wait, I hear something. 
that's the sound of, of Israel. Israel says, I will come to you. And then God says, hey, if you're going to come to me, verse 1 and 2, you better come. Okay, put the script down. Talk to Judah. Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground. Circumcise yourselves. So the, so remove the foreskins of your hearts. O men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my wrath go like forth like fire, burn with quench because of the evil deeds. And right here, the next one. The next one. Declare in Judah and proclaim in Jerusalem and say, blow the trumpet through the land. We assume right here. Because if you look over here, three, four, right here. See, we got on five of them, we have a subheading. Okay. Bible Gateway, which is really difficult to read with all these translations. Let's let's go though. There's verse one, the, the giant four. Here's verse two, 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 three, three way up here. So the new King James version is is at three when these are still at two. Where is the break? We think it's a five, right? Okay, five. It doesn't look like there's a break in the King James. <gasps> Judgment from the north, disaster from the north, an imminent invasion, disaster from the north. The King James version was really was, was old. And when it was originally published, dribbling water. <laughs> when it was originally published, it had no subtitles. It was difficult to understand for that reason. They don't put a subtitle in there. Let's hit up. Okay. We want to like make sure. We want to see if others agree that between verses 4 and 5 there's a break. So in ESB, let's change versions. Let's do this. Um, New King James. Okay, so not King James, New King James. So the King James didn't have subheadings, but the New King James might. Okay, what do we normally have? The Berean Study Bible. Right here we have the, where is it at? It's a little older one right here, but it's New Revised Standard. And we have this Catholic version, the Catholic public domain. Then we'll have the new international readers version. New international, but we got to go to new international readers. Then we'll have the web, which is like 1997. It's not necessarily a scholar. It's they 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 basically took a bunch of English translations, try to put it together. Um, I've seen people quote from it before. Um, Kind of neat. New Living Translation. The, we'll go for the, uh, where is it at? Easy to read version. Yeah. Safe. All right. Let's see. Verse five, all across the board, except for the web and the Catholic public domain version. We got subtitles. So they all think that this is now a start of a new section. Okay. We could say, well, we'll look now right here, and then there will be no one who can extinguish it because of the wickedness of your thoughts. So, otherwise, my indignation may burst forth and flare up like a fire. Declare it in Judah, make it known in Jerusalem, speak out and sound the trumpet in the land, cry out strongly and say, gather yourselves and let's go into fortified cities. Lift up a standard in Zion, be strengthened, do not choose to stand still. For. This is all stuff about the army, military stuff. You raise a flag to say, hey, there's a there's danger coming. You blow the trumpet to say, uh-oh, there's danger coming. Go into a city 
because in an open field, if an army gets to you, if bad guys get to you, they kill you easy. Go into a fortified city, you got walls to protect you at least. Do not choose to stand still. You better get ready. Why? I am bringing evil and evil from the north with great destruction. Up here. Um, be circumcised to the Lord. Turn away the force. Take away the foreskin from your heart. So I'm into Judah. Oh, it happens to Jerusalem. Otherwise, my indignation may burst forth and flare up like a fire. <gasps> Declare it in Judah. Make it speak. Disaster, disaster. Be strengthened. I am bringing great destruction and evil. See, verse six. What is what he's talking about in verse four? Right? That's the, my indignation may burn, burst forth and flare up like a fire. I mean, and down here, he talks about it as a lion. The lion has ascended from his den and the pillager of the nations has lifted himself up. A lion has descended and a pillager, a pillager is a human, a, a destroyer of nations, you know, has set out. He has gone from his, Right here, he has gone forth from his place so that he may set your land in desolation. Your cities will be laid waste without an inhabitant, remaining without an inhabitant. Hmm. Concerning this, wrap yourselves in hair cloth, mourn and well. So he talked about that earlier up here. If you remove your offense before my face, you will not be shaken. If you swear as the Lord lived in truth and justice, right? So maybe, I mean, he talked about mourning and wailing in chapter three. Talking about it down here. Where is it at? Mourning and wailing. For the wrath of the fear of the Lord has not been turned away from us. God said, I would turn to you in love. Right here, he's like, I'm going to turn to you in wrath and stuff. And up here, um, my indignation may burst forth against you. So you would think uh, maybe this isn't. Maybe, maybe this is all the same. Maybe all these translations that put a subtitle, either A, they got it wrong, that this is a new, a, a translation, like, like Jeremiah was speaking, and he ended speaking here in verse 4. Verse 5 is a new speech Jeremiah is going to give. He's going to, pre as a new preaching thing he's going to give, declare it in Judah and make it known in Jerusalem. Speak, okay. Uh, say right there at the colon so that's the speech is going to make it is blow the trumpet throughout the land shout loudly say gather together let us okay so this is like the subtitle that god gives it's actually in the scripture right because of because of this first sentence in verse five we assume the readers assume that the whole God talking to Israel and Israel talking to God through Jeremiah is finished. That that say remember chapter two. Okay, chapter one. We got the introduction here, verses one through three. Then we got Jeremiah being called as a prophet, verses four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, right there. Because then a word of the Lord came to me. This could still be God, God up here saying, hey, don't say I'm too young. God says, you're going to be a prophet. Jeremiah, I'm too young for that. I don't know. God says, no, here's my words. You're going to stand up strong. Jeremiah, what do you see? This could be God putting the words in Jeremiah's mouth. This could be the same situation. Or this could be, Okay, so God gave him the thing. Then later, God gives him these visions. We're not very sure, you know, because down here, he still says, uh, I will speak my judgments with them. Uh, oh, they will each arrive. Let me see, let me see. Therefore, you should gird your waist and rise up and speak them. Everything I instruct you, you should not have dread before them, right? I will cause you to be unafraid. So earlier, God was saying he's going to, and here he's saying, look, you're, you're going to speak to them, but they're going to be scared. Here's some visions I'm giving to you. And hey, you're going to be scared, but don't worry. So we can see patterns, whether this is, a, whether chapter one is one time or it's God talking to Jeremiah at two or more separate times, God's telling him the same things. Chapter three and chapter four, 
chapter three and then the beginning of chapter four. And then chapter four, verse five, I pointed out where well, you see there's similar stuff. You see there's similar stuff. So maybe it's the same. Or God just speaks similarly. Across, like if I give a message at one time and then I give a different message at another time, let's say Jeremiah does. Jeremiah gives a message from God at one time, gives a different message from God at another time, a different message at another time. He's going to repeat some of the same things. It's just going to happen. So that's chapter one, God telling and com commissioning Jeremiah saying, I will be with you. Next chapter. The word of the Lord came to me saying, go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. So now here's the actual thing he's going to proclaim. Jeremiah's got told by God. You're going to be my prophet. Jeremiah protested. God said, I'm going to make you strong. I'm going to give you my words. Hey, here are some visions. Yes, those are the things you're going to proclaim, Jeremiah. Now go and do it. Now, what did Jeremiah go and proclaim? Chapter two, all the way down. If we remember, all the way to chapter three. Verse now. In the, now, in the days of King Josiah, the Lord said to me, have you seen what faithless Israel has done in the day that, so, so this, in the days of King Josiah, the Lord said to me, well, the Lord said all this stuff to him, right? Chapter two, which Jeremiah is supposed to go proclaim in the first few verses of chapter three, that's like one long message. Jeremiah is supposed to go proclaim it, right? God God told him stuff then. This seems a little different because he says, now in the days of King Josiah. He could have said, now the words that now these words came to me in the days of King Josiah. He could have been talking about chapter two. But he immediately follows it since he's he's not, because we know now in the days of King Josiah, the Lord said to me, Have you seen what Faithless Israel has done? She has gone up under it, and that's immediately attached to. All the stuff we read about God, Jeremiah proclaiming to the north. Israel, come do this. Wait, I hear what Israel's saying. Come back to me, Israel. Israel says, I'll come back to you. It's, it's a different message. Because he's got to go to the north and proclaim it. Whereas chapter 2 and the first few verses of chapter 3, it says, go to Judah and Jerusalem and proclaim it. I guess he could have proclaimed it and then heard from God. In the day of the King Josiah, why? And, and he just decided to say, hey, don't forget. It's during the King, days of King Josiah. So, so Jeremiah's proclaiming all that stuff in chapter two. Then he reminds us, hey, this is during the day of the King Josiah. Then he says, wait, I hear something. Proclaim it to the north. Okay. Then he just turns to the north. And proclaim. Is it all in one? Is it, is it all one long thing? Most likely not. We're pretty sure it's not. That's why we can assume chapter four, whenever he seems to be done talking to Doing the, doing the Israel and God talking to each other, little spiel. When he's done with that, and then he says something to Judah and Jerusalem here. Chapter 5, he seems he's, he's, he's done talking to Israel. It's no longer, this is him proclaiming to the north, talking to, you know, God saying this, and then Israel says that, and then wait, I hear Israel say something on the barren heights, and then Israel says it. It's, we're, no longer, we're no longer in that little drama. We're now back to Jeremiah proclaiming stuff. That's why we assume chapter verse five of chapter four. So it seems like chapter one, all of chapter two itself. Well, you got the first three verses in the introduction, then the chapter, chapter two. Then you got the first few verses of chapter three. Then there's chapter three, then the first few verses of chapter four. I wonder if it's chapter four, then the first few verses of chapter five. Then chapter five is a new message. And then the first few verses of chapter six is the same message. Then, you know, I wonder if the same, I'm not sure. Let's try and read real quick and see. Declare to Judah, make it known in Jerusalem. Speak out and sound the trumpet in the land. Cry out strongly and say, gather yourselves and let us go forth to the fortified cities. Close parentheses. Lift up a standard of Zion. Be strengthened. Do not choose to stand still for I am bringing evil from the north with great destruction. Remember, this is Jeremiah talking to Judah and Jerusalem for God. So this is God talking through Jeremiah. 
for I, God, am bringing you. The lion has descended from his den, and the pillager of nations has lifted himself up. He has gone forth from his place. That would be the evil armies of the north, and be the Babylons, and be Nebuchadnezzar, so that he may set your land in desolation. Your cities will be laid waste, remaining without an inhabitant. So even if they go in their fortified cities concerning this, wrap yourselves in hair cloth, mourn and well, for the wrath of the fear of the Lord has not been turned away from us. Like I said, he's going to repeat things. That's what he told Israel to do, and hopefully Judah would see it. Now he's telling Judah to do it. And this shall be in that day, says the Lord. We talked about that day. The heart of the king will perish with the heart of the princess. And the priests will be stupefied. And the prophets will be in consternation. And I, Jeremiah, said, this is, alas, 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 O Lord God. Could it be that you have deceived this people in Jerusalem, saying, peace shall be yours? Well, behold, you, the sword reaches even to the soul. Close parentheses. Open parentheses. In that time, it will be said to this people and to Jerusalem, a burning wind is in the way, is in the ways that are in the desert, along the way of the daughter of my people, but not to winnow and not to cleanse. Jeremiah is like, God, you're promising these people peace, but a sword reaches even to their soul or here, their throats, see throat, throat, a uh, heart, New King James. Look, God, you're, when has God proclaimed peace? When? I mean, he's been saying, if you don't, then I'm going to kill you. If I'm going to send. If you don't turn to me, I'm going to send the army. If you don't come back to me, I'm going to send the foreign army. That's what he's been saying. But here, Jeremiah is like, God, you promised peace. And Jeremiah is saying, but Lord, you're saying that they're going to be destroyed. And versus what is it? Verses 5. Through nine, God's saying, y'all are going to be destroyed. You're going to need to well and mourn. Not so I won't destroy you, because God told Israel, well and mourn and, and weep, and I won't destroy you. But here it says, concerning yourself, wrap yourself in hair cloth, uh, sackcloth. That's a way of, of lamenting and mourning. Mourn and well. Why? For the wrath of the fear of the Lord has not been turned away from us. That day, even though you're mourning well, the heart of the king will perish, the heart of the princes, the priests will be stupefied. Jeremiah's like, God, could it be that you've deceived this people saying, and you've deceived this people in Jerusalem saying, peace shall be yours if they mourn? While behold, the sword reaches even to their soul. God, you're saying if they mourn and if they will, and if they say, I'm sorry, Lord, then you would turn from them. But no. A sword is at their throat. God, look, there's an army coming. We have to lift up the standard. We have to blow the trumpet because there's an army coming. So Jeremiah's like talking back to God. Wait, God, wait. You say all this, but you know that you. There are also, you, it could either be Jeremiah saying, God, it could, Jeremiah could be saying this. God, you promised them, pe promise them peace. God promised them peace. And Jeremiah is talking about God promising them peace if they would repent. But also, lots of false prophets, whenever we read further in Jeremiah, and whenever we read in 2 Kings and other places, other places in 2 Kings, and even in 1 Kings probably. Oh, yeah, I can think of a story in 1 Kings. Yeah, yeah, I can think of a story in 1 Kings. Yeah, yeah. Prophets go to the king and tell the king, don't worry, you'll be fine, king, whenever disaster is coming. There's a famous story where all the prophets are saying, go up and fight the bad guys. Then a prophet of Yahweh, not the fake prophets, but a prophet of Yahweh comes out and says, dude, you're, you're going to go up and you're going to die. Lots of prophets are probably telling the king, peace, peace. They're probably telling Jerusalem, don't worry. This is the, where the Lord's temple is. Don't worry. This is where Yahweh is. Look, look. This is Jerusalem. It can't be attacked. And Jeremiah is going, God, are you deceiving? Are you telling them? I mean, look, God, you're telling me to say, here comes an army. 
<laughs> but all these other prophets and such are saying otherwise. Why are you letting? Why are you giving mixed signals, God? Did Jeremiah think God's talking through the prophets, through the false prophets? Probably not. Jeremiah probably does not think God is talking through the false prophets. But God is not stopping the false prophets from telling Jerusalem and the people that stuff. You would think God would stop the false prophets and say, don't listen to my false prophets. And whenever they start prophesying, God would strike them mute. God would strike them dead because they're like against him. And, and God would say, only listen to Jeremiah. God would shine a light on Jeremiah. Everybody would have to listen to him. You, you would, you know, could God do stuff like that? Sure. Jeremiah, we're not exactly sure why here Jeremiah is protesting. God, you're saying peace shall be yours. While behold, there's a sword. And then God says, Jeremiah, look. In that time, because you got a parenthesis here, then an open parenthesis. In that time, I'm assuming this is God talking to him. We'll see. It will be said to this people and to Jerusalem, a burning wind is in the ways that are in the desert, along the way of the daughter of my people, but not to winnow and to cleanse. You need wind to, uh, to winnow your crops. You need wind to clean your wheat. You throw the wheat up in the air. The chaff flies away. The wheat falls down. That's winnowing. God's saying, that's not the kind of wind that's coming. You might think that's the kind of wind that's coming. Remember, you know, you're saying peace, peace. Whenever a sword is coming to them. But no, God's saying a burning wind is coming. Not one to winnow. Oh, good. A wind's coming. Good. We can get some winnowing done. Nope. It's not to winnow and cleanse. A full spirit from these places will come to me. And now I will speak my judge. A full spirit? A wind too strong for that. Ah, now it is I who will speak in judgment against them. Look, mm -hmm. this is strange. Okay, so I went back and I reviewed chapters two and three. Well, uh, chapter three, especially. Then I went all the way back to chapter one, two, and three. We got to chapter four. We talked about, are we sh up here? Why we think this is a new, why verse five is a new thing. If not, then when reading, you can at least say, I know that there's probably a new thing. I know there's at least new, we're at least done with, with God talking to Israel, Israel talking to God, the whole, the whole fake, the whole, the whole play acting thing. I keep calling it. We at least know we're done with that. Now we get into chapter four and, oh man. Now we got Jeremiah talking back to God about something that seemingly hasn't happened, that, that God said, peace shall be yours when we haven't seen God say that, except if you repent, peace will be yours. Maybe, but. Jeremiah doesn't give details. Then we got here. Is this God talking here? These are the, the versions I'm more comfortable with. The NIV, the NASB, the SY. I clicked over. Uh -oh. That is my alarm telling me I need to leave soon. I'm going to go to the chapter four. NIV, NASB. I mean, the uh, uh, Bible hub. Okay. Come that day that the heart of the king, the princess, will fail. Okay. Then I said, Oh, good Lord God, surely you have utterly deceived the people in Jerusalem, saying, You will have peace, whereas a sword touches their throat. Um, NESB, NIV, ESV. Okay. All of them, the parentheses are closed. Oh, oh, except the King James Version, which doesn't have much parentheses. But parentheses, parentheses closed, closed, closed. The Holman Christian Standard Bible, the parentheses, open. Here, they don't open the parentheses in these three. Remember the King James, no parentheses. <laughs> so we're just talking about one. One, two, three, four. All right. No parentheses in these three. At verse 11, parentheses here, meaning they close them and they open a new set. So probably someone else is talking. It would be strange to close them and open them if the same person was talking without saying, and then later on, or, and now I'm going to say this to you, you, you know, so I close them and then thus says the Lord, and then you, 
or thus says me, I guess, you know, just, so we assume now that verse 11 is God talking again. So God was talking through verses. Let me see. Verse five, declare in Judah and proclaim in Jerusalem and say, God is telling Jeremiah to proclaim in Judah and Jerusalem and say this stuff. So God is talking here, talking all the way down. Verse eight, verse nine. It shall come upon that day, declares the Lord that the heart of the king and the princes will fail and the priests will be appalled and prophets will be astounded. Then I said, so this can't be God. So then God said, ah, oh, Lord God. Well, so up here declares the Lord. Then declares the Lord. Ah, oh, Lord. Nope. Nope. This must be Jeremiah talking. Surely you God have utterly deceived the this people in Jerusalem. Is it Jeremiah talking? <clears throat> or, well, he does say, then I said, I, Jeremiah. Parentheses close. Now, is this God? In that time, it will be said to this people and to Jerusalem. Now, is God talking to Jeremiah? I bet he is. God says, Jeremiah, you need to go proclaim all this stuff. And then Jeremiah, like, interrupts God. And then Jeremiah, God says to Jeremiah, we're just talking through this right now. Is this, exa is this exactly what it is? We're just talking through it a little bit. We'll talk through it more next time. Because I got to go soon. A scorch. In that time, it will be said to this people and to Jerusalem, a scorching wind from the bare heights in the wilderness in the direction of the daughter of my people. That's Israel, I believe. They were on the bare heights. Okay, yes. Remember, Israel was exiled to the north. A scorching wind is coming from the north, from the bare heights, where Jerusalem called earlier in chapter, and that 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 thing in chapter three. Wait, I hear a voice from the bare heights. A wind is coming, not to winnow and not to cleanse. A wind too strong for this will come at my command. Now I will also pronounce judgments against them. Who are them? Okay, okay. Hmm. So Jeremiah's like, is it is it that Jeremiah's going, God, I'm not sure you're, you're saying one thing, but you're meaning another. And God's saying, don't worry. A wind's going to come and get them. Now I'm going to pronounce judgments against them. It's not going to be a good wind. It's going to be a bad wind. I will also pronounce judgments against them. Behold, he goes up like clouds and his chariots like the whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe to us, for we are ruined. Wash your hearts from evil, O Jerusalem. Oh, and then that's, and then again, with, uh, how long were your wicked thoughts lodged within you? For a voice declares from Dan and proclaims wickedness from Mount Ephraim. Is this, is this Jeremiah talking? Is this God talking? Because we see, and, and, and right here, parentheses close up here. So NIV and ESV think that it's God starts talking here. And that this is Jeremiah right here. Okay, so there's a parenthesis, and it goes all the way down. We don't see any print. Now I pronounce judgment against them, and then they have a parenthesis again. We'll really have to study this out. Okay, guys, I got to go, but we'll see you soon, hopefully, on the next very basic Bible. And we'll get all this parentheses stuff. Who's talking, who's not. Will we get it totally figured out? Probably not. But God honors us having wisdom in him. Yeah. God honors us studying his word and figuring out what he's trying to say to us. The more we figure this out and discuss this, then when we read it to get theology, when we read it for devotions, when we're reading Bible in a year and we come through this part, you think, oh, no, I'll be super confused because I won't know who's talking. Actually, you'll you'll say. I've gotten through the I got confused and trying to figure out. I got past the confusion and I know that there's some weird stuff. But I have a general feel of what's going on and you'll be able to go through it when I play video games. I go through mazes 
several times and I know the general lay of the land. I don't have it memorized usually. I know it, I know the general part so well eventually that I can just kind of play through it pretty quickly with minimal problems. That's what we want here. Football players play the same exact play so many times, but they're not going to say, I have every single step memorized. They'll have certain things memorized, but mostly they get the feel of it as a football player. They get the ball and they run and they go and they just they just feel it without having to like commit it, like, like here's a play, but commit it to rote memory. They do that too because they're being paid lots of money, but mostly they've run the play so many times and, you know, and then they got to somehow kind of, uh-oh, I'm, I'm playing three teams. These three football teams will, will uh, have, will come against us in different ways. So whenever you're reading through this, we want to be so familiar with it. We want to just kind of feel it to where whenever, wait a minute, I didn't notice this before. You're not suddenly lost because we've already talked through it enough. All right. God honors that. We'll see y'all in the next very basic level.